Um, turn your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 1. And um, I think I preached this several years ago, but I feel led to preach it one more time to you, and I'll probably preach it again sometime down the road. But my text really is found in verse 4, but I want to read you the first four verses of Nehemiah chapter 1. And it says, The words of Nehemiah the son of Hilkalah, And it came to pass in the months of Chislu, in the twelfth year, as I was in Shushan, Shushan the palace, and Hanai, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And he said unto me, The remnant that are left of captivity there in the province of great affliction and reproach, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God, before the God of heaven. My sermon title tonight is Four Things that I promise to do for you. Um, you can take this to the bank. If I don't do it for you, you can call me a liar. But right now our church is going through a transi- time of transition. We, we're moving out of here. and um, You know, I, I really don't care the fact that we're moving out of here. I believe it's God's total will. Um, I have everybody that I've talked to, every pastor that I've talked to, every, uh, most of the people here that I've spoken to that says it's a good thing that we're moving to the, to the, um, uh, um, the, the conference center. And I believe it is. I believe it's a very good thing. I believe it's the will of God. They could come back with the new director coming here on the 18th. Uh, the new director could say, hey, we want you to stay. <laughs> the answer will be no. I don't believe this is the will of God. This spot's the will of God for us anymore. Um, You say, then why are we here till the end of the month? Because of contractual obligations and obligations that I said that I would fulfill. I have a fulfillment of my duties. And my dear friends, I want to talk to you uh, about four things that I promise over the and and I have been and I've and I will continue to promise to do for you. As I said before, we started this message tonight when you couldn't uh, come here because of the, the 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 decision of one person to listen to several people's lies about you. My heart wept, and I'm so glad that you decided to come back when when Adrian was sick. Uh, and and not feeling well, my heart, uh, my heart uh, went out for you, folks. I, I remember the times when my kids weren't sick, weren't well, weren't sick, that were sick and weren't well, and 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 uh, especially Abigail when she she wasn't a sickly kid, but it was our first child, and and uh, again, children do not come with owners' manuals, amen. Um, how many parents wish children came with owners' manuals? <laughs> <laughs> New parents, uh-huh. Um, and uh huh. And by the way, the Bible is the owner's manual to help us raise our children. And uh, you, when when uh, Ramona, your your hip, uh, when you broke your hip, my I, I my heart hurt for you. My hip also probably hurt for you. Uh, when uh, your mom passed away, and when your grandmother passed away, Sarah, you, my heart broke for you. And Malou's mom, when she passed away, and Freddie's dad passed away, my heart broke for you, them. My dear friends, I'm not only your pastor, I am your friend. And if I cannot weep and mourn, and, and, and well, I, I gave you two of my points. <laughs> but if I cannot do these things for you, there's something wrong with me. I'm not a hireling. How many people don't know what a hireling is? How many, how many people know what a hireling is? Raise your hands. How many people do not know what a hireling is? Raise your hand. A hireling is one who, is, who does the job just to get paid. You know, every, every month when I get, my, I get an email from pay, PayWorks, your statement is ready. I, 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 I don't know. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'll stop and I'll go, God, did I really deserve the paycheck that the church gave me this month? 
And I, I honestly, I, I, at times, I feel that I don't do enough to earn my paycheck. And last month, the month of June, uh, the month of June with the death of my mom and taking some personal time, I, I honestly think I should give half of my paycheck back. But my dear friends, I'm here to tell you, I promise to do some things for you. My text really is found in verse 4. It says, And it came to pass, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. The word heard, let me just give you some study words here. The word heard, and by the way, in, if you have a, a Schofield reference Bible, it'll talk about, above verse 4, it'll talk about, it'll say, Nehemiah's prayer. The word heard means to, to consider or to give uh, to ear, to cause, to, to listen, to e even be obedient to or to perceive. My dear friends, when I hear that there's something wrong with your family, I hurt. I do. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, Marco was here by himself and and I said, oh, where's, where's Lindsay? I almost said, where's the better half? And the boss, um, the boss meaning Adrian. Uh, you know, it's all, it's funny when 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 she comes and she's disheveled. Marco gets up and Marco goes to the back. And uh, at that age, we, we we joke about the 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 baby being the boss. Well, most times the baby does run the home. Amen, amen, parents. <laughs> and uh, when the baby's crying. Everybody jumps, <laughs> and uh, but and Marco said that Adrian was not feeling well. My heart sank; it really did. Um, I don't like when no when people aren't feeling well, especially children. And my dear friends, I really want you to realize that I am passionate about being your pastor. I I really am. I don't take that, I don't take that uh, title and that position in your life lightly. Um, uh, there are times when I get texts and emails and phone calls from you about, but what to go through in your life, what you're, what to do in in certain situations in your life, and I don't take a paradise and okay, if it's even, tell them to scream at them. If it's odd, tell them to shut up. I, I don't do that. I I I pray and earnestly pray. I, I was asked a question a couple weeks ago about uh, about a portion of scripture. What does it mean? And I I went to prayer. I studied and I and and I didn't I I I I knew the answer, but I wanted to give some biblical reasons behind the answer. I don't just uh I don't just take my paycheck and run. Um I for the first time in 12 years, I have decided from now on to take a day off and one day off a week to recharge my batteries. Now, if you call me, it's my day off tomorrow. If you call me, I will be there for you. I will drop everything for you. You know that. But I won't be in the office. I will answer phone calls from people that I know, not from people that I do not know. They'll go to voicemail. And if it's an emergency, I will get to them. But for you folks, if you call on my day off, I will always be readily available for you. I mean that. You are my family. The word passionate, as I said, I am passionate about being your pastor, means easily moved to anger. And if you say, well, that doesn't be, that doesn't be good. If you get attacked, it's like attacking me. I mean that. I'm here for you. It also means to be excited. I'm excited when you do something for God. You know, tonight I, I saw Marco and Lindsay. I, I went around the corner. I saw Marco and Lindsay come. I was excited. I, I saw Carol. I heard her little wheels go. And down the, down, I'm excited. Uh, Ramona, I'm excited when I hear you. Uh, my dear friend Natalie, I'm excited when I get to see you as well. Sarah and, 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 and Jim and, and all of you, my kids, I'm excited to see you in church.
I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I get to wake up every morning being your pastor. I don't take that lightly. I'm honored. I'm honored. The four things that I promise as your pastor, as your spiritual leader, that I will do for you. Now, it's, it's, this is not one of the four, but I, I promise I'll lead you down the right path. But I'm talking to Nehemiah. Now, I believe Nehemiah probably was the greatest leader for God next to Jesus in the Bible. Nehemiah was a godly man. And I, I'll tell you something. I, I, I hope I could just scratch just a little bit of what Nehemiah was. The first thing that I promise I will do for you is to weep for you. Again, and it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down and wept. The word wet means to, to, to lament or to mourn. You say, well, man, I don't have a, a, a death in the family. But you know what? I, 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 when, 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 when there's a sickness, I choose to weep. To cry. See, you know, when I was growing up, I heard, well, real men don't cry. Well, then Jesus wasn't a real man because in John chapter 11, verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, it says Jesus wept. And Jesus wept, looked over Israel and wept. And when I look over the, the you folks at times, I'll weep. Not because you're not walking with the Lord, because you hurt. You hurt. You know, I, uh, I know people have secular jobs and they work in the world and, 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 and I weep for you that you have to go and work for the man. Uh, I would rather, honestly, Marco, I would love to our church and, and Freddie and, and Jim, I'd love for our church to grow enough that says, you know, and Sarah and, 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 and Lindsay, I'd love for our church to grow, grow large enough that we could say, hey, you know what? We got a Christian school. We need two teachers. Hello. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we, need a phys ed, we need a phys ed teacher. Marco. Amen. He could teach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, basketball. He just, hey, if we, if, we, if, we, if we don't have, if we can't afford a, a pole with a backboard and a net, we just have Marco standing up there holding it up, amen. Uh, he's tall enough, God bless him, amen. And, and we need, we need a, a caretaker for our church building and we need a, we need a RU man, whatever the case may be. I would love to be able to, to afford to pay you folks full time. But Monday morning when, when I, when, I, uh, uh, when, when I know Marco's at work and Sarah's at work and Jim goes to work and Freddie goes to work, I pray for you and I weep that you, might, you may come under persecution because of who you are, because of your faith. And my dear friends, I, I'm here to tell you, when you hurt, I hurt. When you hurt, I hurt. The second thing that I promise to do for you is that I will mourn for you. The word mourn, you say, well, what's the difference? There is a difference. The word mourn means to bewail or to wail in tears. It means to lament. It occurs 39 times in the Bible. Folks, we've had a lot of death over the last several years in our church. Some of you residents, your friends have been wheeled out. And I hurt. I mourn for you. I'm working on a, um, I did a memorial service for my mom. I did a memorial service for uh, Freddie's dad. I did a memorial service for your mom. I did a memorial service for your grandmother. And every time, every time we have somebody that has a family member that dies, I work on a memorial service. Next Sunday night will be a memorial service for Malou's mom. Every time. And it's a different one every time. I may use the same scripture, but it's a different, it's a different message. Folks, listen to me. When you hurt, when you, when you mourn, I will mourn with you. 
I will stand right beside you. I'll be there. It doesn't matter what time, day or night. My phone is always available for you. In other words, you can call me at any time. By the way, if you do call at 2.30 in the morning, please explain who you are because I'm probably sleeping. I'm hopefully sleeping anyways. My dear friends, I will drop everything for you if need be. I mean that. I'm on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you folks. When I was, a few weeks ago, when I, a few, about a month ago, when I was down in, in Indiana and in Illinois, I made sure every day that I called back to make sure everything is okay. I think I called you a half a dozen times. I think I called you a half a dozen times. I called my wife over a hundred times. But I made sure that my family, my church family back here was okay. And if you had a lo- if a loss of a loved one came, I would have immediately came back. Immediately. My dear friends, not only will I weep for you, not only will I mourn for you, but I will also fast for you. The word fast means to cover over, cover over the mouth. There are times when I have stopped and not eaten, have gone out of the way to just to pray for each and every one of you on a certain time. Now, I believe in fasting. How many people have never fasted and prayed before? People have never done that. Please be honest with yourself. You've never fasted and prayed. Just raise your hand. Have you guys fasted and prayed before? Isn't it a great time? Man, you, you, there's, there's nothing like the time of fasting and praying because you get close with God. And my dear friends, I, I promise I will fast for you. And during this next uh, four weeks when we, we move uh, from now to the time we move, I will fast for you. I may fast for each and every one of you collectively in the same meal or same times of meal. And I'm not asking you to fast the whole day. Uh, and sometimes I don't fast the whole day. I'll just fast a meal and, and go and I'll pray. And my wife will say, well, are you, are you not going to eat tonight? I say, no, I'm not hungry. And I don't go, oh, I'm so I'm fasting. And when you fast, don't let people know you fast, by the way. But the word fast means is, is 70, appears 75 times in the Bible, fasted 15 times in the Bible, and 17 times the word fasting appears in the Bible. I think that God means business when it comes to fasting. And I'll tell you something, I not only will weep and mourn, but I will fast for you. And, 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 and when fasting comes along, it comes along with praying hand in hand. See, if we don't pray when we fast, it is just going without a meal. Now, I've gone without meals before. Traveling, you don't eat. But I'm here to tell you, I promise that I will fast for you. I know this isn't a big theological message tonight. It's a message really from my heart that that I, that I, I, I don't take the position that I hold very lightly in your life. And the last thing, and I I mean, I told you I wasn't going to be long tonight. But the last thing that I, I promise I will do for you is that I will pray for you. The word pray means, by extension, in this, in this, this word prayer means, it's, it's, it comes from the Hebrew word paula. It means to intercede, to entreat, to pray for, to make supplication for. There are times when I pray for you more than I pray for my own family because God lays on my heart. You may not be praying for that, but God lays on my heart to pray for you. I remember a few years ago, how long have you been at Staples, sir? Two years now? Year and a bit? 
I remember one Saturday, that fateful Saturday morning, God woke me up and I started praying for Sarah for some reason. I said, Lord, I don't know why you want me to pray for Sarah, but Lord, I'm praying for her this morning. And, and, uh, and I prayed and I prayed and, and then a phone rang. It was Sarah. She answered the phone. I said, hey, I'm praying for you today. She said, can I come over? Like, aren't you supposed to be at work? I didn't say that. She, I said, sure. She came over. She was still in her, her pet smart uniform and still had her pet smart ID tag on with her little cat, uh, uh, Lily, right? What's the picture of Lily? And she came over and I, she came in crying. Um, yeah, crying. I was going to say weeping, but she wasn't weeping. She was crying. Immediately, I started getting choked up. Didn't know why she was crying, but I got choked up. She said, Pastor, I walked into work today and they let me go. I'm like, oh. We immediately prayed for her. And that morning I had prayed for her. And I, when I went home, after she left, we, we, she, she came and we, we had a little bit of a, a snack together and she stayed for lunch, I believe, that day. Ate me at a house and home. What? <laughs> Breakfast. Sorry, she ate me at a house and home. She didn't know when her next meal was coming, so she ate me at a house and home. I'm teasing you, by the way. But after she left, I said, Lord, did I pray her out of a job? But I prayed for her. And by the way, when you first came, Marco and Lindsay, that next morning, my, your lips or your prayers were on, or your names were on my, my lips in prayer. Immediately. Didn't know if I'd ever see them again. And you know, we get visitors and they come once. They don't come back because they think I'm ugly. I don't know, amen. They must think I'm good looking and a good orator or something. They just keep on coming. Man. Either that or they're a glutton for punishment. I don't know. But I pray for you folks. I'm not saying this to give myself a pat on the back. I'm just saying this because of the fact that I want you to know that you're important to me. Just as you are important to God, the Bible says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are thy works. You know something? I wish, honestly, every month that I get, I get every one of you as my prayer partner, but I only get one of you. And for that month, I'll tell you something. I pray earnestly for you. Hard and earnestly for you. And most of the time, I pray for everyone every day. My dear friends, when you pray for somebody else, it feels good. A couple weeks ago, I prayed, I preached a message on, are you praying? And I got my first, um, uh, I got an email, I sent it out this morning and somebody emailed me back, or actually I preached it last week. Um, uh, uh, somebody emailed me back, good message. And I'm like, okay. And, uh, but you know, what? I'll tell you something, praying for other people will, will cause your heart to sing. You know, I, I, Jim, he, he lives by faith. He, he basically every day goes and calls the, the temp agency and says, do you got a job? Do you got a job? Do you got a job? And when I hear he got a job that day, I'm like, yeah. And, and I get excited. How, 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 how's a little bit? She healthy? Good? She's just at home with mama? Amen. You know what? It, it, it warms my heart that she's healthy again. I, it saddens me that I don't get to see her. But I'll tell you, I, I hope we get to see her grow up. I hope if Marco ever allows her to date. Amen, Marco? <laughs> and we'll see, amen. <laughs> and when she, when she gets to the point when she's ready to date, Marco comes and says, Pastor, can I have those 200 questions? Amen. <laughs> Where can I... Hey, can I, do you have that sharpening stone? For, I need my knife sharpened, amen. Um, but I hope one day that if he, if, that, that she, when she falls in, or falls in love with a young man, strapping young man, and they're getting married, I, I hope one day they'll stand before this altar and we'll get to, we'll get to marry them off. 
I hope one day when my, my, when my daughters start to date, one day I'll hope, hopefully marry them off. Sarah as well. Jim, I, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 maybe 63 years old. Anybody listening on the internet? <laughs> no, I'm teasing you. <laughs> um, but all kidding aside, I promise to do those four things for you. I promise to pray for you, to fast for you, to weep for you, to mourn for you. When you're hurt, hurting, I hurt too. I mean that. When you hurt, I hurt too. When you're sick, I may not be physically sick, but my heart is sick. And there are times that I have prayed, dear Lord, and I did this with your daughter. Dear Lord, if you so choose to give me their sickness and let them be okay. Now, if you have cancer, I probably will never do that. Your COPD, I probably will never pray that. But I'll pray, dear Lord, help them. Dear Lord, help them through. Well, you, on, on, on July 1st, Canada Day, I, I texted Sarah. Sarah, you coming over to see the fireworks? She called me. I missed her call, and I called her back, and she ignored my call. And um, I was all heartbroken. And uh, she called me. She said, I'll, I'll call you in a minute. So we, we, when we were leaving, and, and I, she, I got her call, and she said, my dad's in the hospital. Immediately, my heart my heart just started to hurt. Why? Because she's hurting. And her dad's not even part of our church, but she's part of my church. It hurts me. Am I the world's greatest pastor? No. Am I a perfect pastor? No. Can I do better? Yes. but do I promise to be all I can be? I will try to be all, my, all I can be. Over the past month, since May 28th, you guys have held my hand since the death of my mom. You have been there for me. It is time for me to put it away. And once again, be there for you. I took some time for myself, and that was probably selfish of me. But I'm here to serve you. I sent an email to Marco and Lindsay. We missed them this morning. I sent an email. I said, if there's any way I can serve you, please let me know. I sent an email earlier this week and they never answered back. And I was thinking, oh, good night in a million. Did you get the email? Oh, okay. Whew. <laughs> I'm thinking, man alive, I upset them. My heart broke, honestly. It's not because, I, I, it's not because I'm, I'm self-conscious of myself. I, I just don't want to upset you. But I'm here to serve you. I'm here to be your servant. A pastor is a servant. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you. You hold me to it. If there is ever a day that I do not serve you, I want you to fire me. promise? There ever a day that I don't serve you, I want, I, I, now I'm not talking just one day, because if, you know, one day, maybe if I'm away on vacation, I may not be able to serve you right away, but I'm talking, if I stop serving you, I want you to fire me. Because I'm here to serve you. Now, you may not like the way I serve you sometimes, because sometimes you might need a good <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, 
I'll do it out of love. I'll do it out of love. I can't make excuses because my job is to serve you. I'll never be too busy. Last summer when we took vacation, Sarah got mad at me. She said, Pastor, don't you use your phone. Don't you check your emails. Well, I took Freddie's email. I took Sarah's email. And I love this, the VIP setting on my phone, on my email program. I put them in VIP settings. I took a couple other people who, of whom that I minister to, and I put their emails on my VIP settings. And those are the emails that I only emails that I looked at. Did I, did I completely take time off my phone? No, I did not. I used it not the first few days. I, we were in cell dead zone, which was kind of good. But I'm here for you. See, just as Nehemiah was busy and I'm busy, but Nehemiah said, I'll take time. When I, let me read that verse again. And it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down. In other words, he took the time because they were important. And wept and mourned certain days, not just one day, but certain days. And fasted and prayed before the God, before the God of heaven. And I'm here to tell you, look, at me, I want to just kind of rewind here a bit. When Freddie's dad was away, or dad was dying, and that week he was in the hospice, he was in the hospice a whole week, and every day I was there for hours on end and hours on end, I still took time to minister to everybody else. And his sister asked, she said, how can Freddie afford you to be here all the time? I said, well, what do you mean? She said, it took... Hey, for five minutes, it cost my $500 for my priest to come and bless my dad. I said, good night, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Amen? He said, how much is Freddy of cost, How much is it costing Freddie for you to be here as much as you have? I said, it costs him a handshake because that's my job. It's my duty to be there for you. Folks, if you ever have to go to the hospital, I want you to call me. I hate when people say, well, I didn't call you because I didn't want, didn't want you to, to bother you. You know what it bothers me that you don't call? I may be away, but, but, but I can sure pray for you. If Sarah said on, Jan, on July 1st, please, can you come down to see me and my dad at the hospital? I would have been down there. Heartbeat. My dear friends, just as Nehemiah was busy and he took time out, I will do that for you. Because you know what? God always takes time for us. And I'm supposed to be like him. I'm supposed to be the example. If Marco tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon says, Pastor calls me up and says, Pastor, my car broke down. Lord, please don't have this happen, okay? I'll do it, but please don't have this happen. <laughs> Pastor, my car broke down and I'm in the middle of nowhere. Will you come and get me? Do you have a GPS, Marco? Not in your car? Do you have a GPS on your phone? I, I, what I would say is send me the coordinates and I'll be there. My dear friends, I'm here for you. We've got a few more weeks here in residence of the home that will not probably be able to come. It doesn't mean that, Natalie, it doesn't mean that our church isn't here. It doesn't mean that I'm not your pastor. I'll still come see you. I promise that, Natalie. You hold me to it, okay? Will you hold me to it, Natalie? Yeah. I'll be here for you. My dear friends, I really just wanted to speak from the heart tonight. It was not a great oratory message. I wish all our people were here.
But the people I believe that God wanted to hear it are here tonight. I want you to know that I love each and every one of you with an agape type love. You are family. You are my boss. But more so, you're my family. And honestly, for most of you, I am closer. Well, for all of you, really. Marco and Lindsay, we've known each other for how many months now? A couple months. I'm closer to you two than I am with my, bio, my actual blood family. I mean that. Your family. I'll battle to hell and back with you folks. And I mean that. When you're in a battle, you call me up. I'll roll up my sleeves. I'll get in the battle with you. Because if you hurt, I hurt. You mourn, I mourn. When you're in the battle, I promise I'll be in the battle with you.